Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tech Tanner. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tech Tanner. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. And today we're going to be taking a look at my newest Christmas light control system. This is the best one I've built yet. It's modular, it's built with off-the-shelf components, which makes it easy to build, and it's also very versatile in how it can be controlled, whether that be through a MIDI keyboard, an Arduino MIDI sequencer, or even the popular Christmas light control program, Vixen. So let's get started. It is kind of a tradition of mine to build a new Christmas light control system every Christmas. So this is the one that I built on my first year, maybe like four or five years ago. Very simple, I used all scrap parts from microwaves to build this relay board, an Arduino, and a custom power supply. This did an uh, FFT on audio that came into it, and tried to distinguish the frequencies and turn off the different relays accordingly. This worked, but it wasn't the best. Fast forward to the next year, and I made these little nodes that would individually turn on lights. You'd plug this into an extension cord and plug a light strand here, and from a 433 megahertz signal sent out by an Arduino base station, it would turn on different lights. This was pretty cool, but I left it out in the rain, and these are definitely not water resistant, so a lot of these burnt out. Fast forward to the next year, and I made something even better. This was a circuit board that I had custom made, it has 16 relays, has an input for audio and an input for MIDI control. This worked, but it had some shortcomings. One of them was that some of my relays just stopped working, and another one was that my code for interpreting the MIDI signals didn't work too well, so it kind of just turned on random relays according to what MIDI signal came in. But this here, I've solved all my problems. So this is the final version, the one that works the best. Here I have a Sane Smart relay board. This is only like $13 on Amazon. It's a pretty good deal considering you get 16 relays and they're all opto-isolated from the inputs. And then have an Arduino Mega, which is pretty cheap, and a MIDI breakout board. I'm not gonna go too much in detail here because it's pretty simple, but all you have to do is really connect a wire from one of the in and out pins of the Arduino Mega to one of the input pins on the relay board. You also have to make sure to connect ground. I have the relay board powered by just soldering wires to the 12 volt input jack of the Arduino, which makes it pretty easy to connect it to power. You just plug in a 12 volt DC adapter and it turns on. Now another thing that I've done here is I've soldered together the transmit and receive pins on this MIDI breakout board, which effectively turns this into a MIDI through device, which means the same MIDI signal that comes out of here is opto-isolated from the MIDI signal that comes out of here, but it's the same MIDI signal. What that means is you can program this Arduino to respond to certain MIDI notes, and you can program the next Arduino to respond to different MIDI notes, which means you can daisy chain lots of these controllers together. I have all three of these boards mounted on a piece of wood, and I just have the screws coming in from the bottom. I countersunk all the screws, so it sits nice and flat. As far as the high voltage side of the relays go, I connected together all of the common pins of each relay, and I connected that to AC Live, so that way the normally open pin of each relay can be connected to the outputs that will go to the different Christmas lights. And these are just extension cords that I cut the ends off of. The neutral line is just all tied together here. So this is where the real magic of this project happens. Here I have an Arduino Mega, and the MIDI breakout board. Right now it's just connected to the output part of the MIDI board. But the cool thing is that I can program this Arduino to do all kinds of different things. I can program it as just a MIDI sequencer where we'll just output a certain number of MIDI commands that will control each of the relays. So for instance, if I wanted to have lots of lights blink in rapid succession, I could program it to do that, and it would just do that automatically. Or I could plug a USB cable from here into my computer and I could set this up so it would take some serial data, for instance, from the Vixen control program, would convert that to MIDI commands and send that to all my relays. I can also use something like this, which is a headphone jack attached to a circuit board with a, two resistors and a capacitor on it. 
And if I plug that into the analog pins here, I can plug this into my phone and the Arduino will detect the beats in the music by detecting the lowest note and it will randomly reassign all the lights after every beat. So this has lots of versatility. You can do a lot of things with this MIDI control board and have a lot of fun with this light setup. All right, so this is the Christmas light setup here. So I've got my board there with the Arduino MIDI input and relay board. And I have this MIDI cable. It's going through a MIDI to USB cable down to a USB extension that goes to my laptop down at the end of the driveway. Here's a basic idea of what's going on inside my Christmas light control system. So starting here, I have my computer and the FM transmitter. The computer then plugs in via a USB cable into one Arduino that acts as the VIX and the MIDI converter. And then goes down a MIDI line to the MIDI board that is connected to the Arduino. The Arduino then interprets that. It's powered by an AC adapter. And then it uses that to control relays according to what MIDI signal is given. That is then daisy chained to other similar setups where each Arduino board is programmed to accept different MIDI notes as controls for different relays. This is the wiring diagram for how it's all set up. Over here we have the Arduino to Vixen converter, the Arduino and the MIDI board. We have 5 volts to 5 volts, ground to ground, and we have the TX pin connected to the TX pin of the MIDI board. Now here it's connected to the serial 1 port. The Arduino Mega actually has four different serial ports as Serial port 0, which is the one that's connected to the USB, and serial port 1, serial port 2, and serial port 3. Then here is a schematic of one of the MIDI controllers. Here we have the MIDI board with the power to power of the Arduino, ground to ground. And we have the RX and TX pins wired together and both connected to the RX pin of the Arduino. Now this is the RX of serial port 1 as well. We then have the wall plug going to VCC and ground. This is important because this VCC is regulated to 5 volts to power the rest of the Arduino. The MIDI board needs 5 volts. So this 12 volts is converted to 5 volts for here. We then have this 12 volts also powered the relay board, and then we have all the control lines just going from pins 22 to 37 of the Arduino to each of the 16 control pins of the relay board. As far as the AC is concerned, we have the common just going to the AC live, normally open pin going to the live wire of your Christmas light bulb and all the neutral wires connected to each other. Now let's discuss what the MIDI signal actually is and what it looks like. So a MIDI signal consists of three bytes, each byte containing eight bits. Each bit is the computer either turning on or off the data line. And each of these bits are sent at a certain rate. This rate in the case of MIDI is approximately 31,250 baud. Baud means symbols per second, and in our case, a symbol is being either on or off. Now let's talk about what each byte actually means. So on the first byte, that tells you what channel you're going to be controlling and what your action is going to be. In this case, byte 1 is set to 144 in base 10. This is 144 in binary, with it being 1001000. This means that channel 1 is going to be turned on as a note. If we send it 128, then that would be channel 1 off. If we sent instead 145, that would be channel 2 on, and 129 would be channel 2 off. The second byte is the note number, so we can send that as a number between 0 and 127, and that will choose which note to turn on. The last one is the attack velocity, and that is how hard a certain note is being pressed. You can find all these values and all the different combinations in the MIDI table you can look up on the internet. I'll put the link in the description. For this project, on board 1, pins 22 through 37 are mapped to MIDI notes 24 through 39, which corresponds to, I think, a low C, a C2 or something. On board 2, pins 22 through 37 are mapped to MIDI notes 40 through 55 and so on. The Vixen program works in a similar way to how MIDI works. So in the Vixen program, it's going to send the amount of bytes equal to however many channels you're controlling, plus some extra bytes if you're using a header. So in my case, I'm using a header, which is a tilde symbol, and it's going to be sending 16, actually 17 bytes. And each byte is going to be 8 bits, 
and those 8 bits are going to be converted into the ASCII character. So in the case of the tilde, that is ASCII character 146, and then for all these other bits, it's going to send either a 1 or a 0 for on and off. Now that's not going to be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 or 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 for binary 1 and 0, but it's going to be 48 and I think 96 for 1 and 0. So that's how uh, Vixen works. It's just going to send these, and it's going to send all these bytes at a certain baud rate. Let's now take a moment to discuss some of the code used in this project. So this code is from the Arduino that is connected to the relay board, and it takes a MIDI signal in and converts it to which relay it is turning on. What it's first going to do is it's going to initialize the different serial ports. This serial port isn't really being used, so I'll uh, double slash it out. But serial 3 is what takes in the MIDI data. So it's set to 31250 baud. Then what it's going to do is it's going to initialize all the pins that it's using as outputs as outputs. And it's going to initialize every point in the Boolean uh, array called pin states to a 1. And then it's going to set all the pin outputs to high. Because of this specific relay board, a high pin means it is off. Then comes the loop, and within the loop is contained this large if statement. If serial 3.available is greater than 2. Now the point of this is to only read the data once it has received 3 bytes, which is equal to the MIDI message. The Arduino, when it receives serial data, it stores it in its buffer. So once it receives 3 bytes, then it's going to assign the serial 3.read the first byte to command, the second byte to pitch, and the third byte to velocity. The velocity really doesn't matter here. But it's going to set the state variable to 0 if the command is 144. And it's going to set the state to 1 if the command is 128. Then it's going to go through and it's going to make sure the MIDI note that is being played is one that will be corresponding to a relay on that board, which is between 24 and 39, which is, I think, a C2 and a D sharp 3. Then it's going to do some math to correlate the MIDI note received to the relay it will turn on. And then it will update the pin states array with that new state that it has received. Then it will run this update relays function, we'll go through and it will write all the pins according to this array of pin states. Now let's go to the second program. This is the Vixen to MIDI converter. This one is a little bit simpler. First of all, we're going to initialize two different uh, arrays of integers, both 17 points long. This will differ depending on how many relays you want to turn on. In my case, I'm only turning on 17, uh, 16 relays, actually, with one start bit. So then what's going to happen here is we're going to initialize two different serial ports. So what this section of the code does is it checks to see if the serial.available is greater than or equal to 17. And if we remember, just like in the other example of code, this is going to check to see if it has received 17 bytes from the Vixen software over the first serial port. It's then going to iterate through all these and set each point of the incoming byte array to each bit of data that it has received. It's then going to check to see if the first bit of data is equal to 126, which is the ASCII equivalent for the tilde. It's then going to iterate through all of these, and it's going to check to see if the incoming byte is greater than 48. In our case, a 48 is a 0 and a 96 is a 1. And it's going to check to see if the point in the old array is equal to 0. And the reason behind this is so our program doesn't send a MIDI command every time it receives a Vixen command, because that would very quickly overload the system and slow it down. So what this does is it only allows it to send the MIDI command if the state has changed. So if the state hasn't changed, it's not going to do anything. But if the state is currently 0 and it has changed to 1, in this case, it's going to send out a MIDI on command at that specific note, according to the specific byte received by Vixen. Now let's go into how Vixen works and how to set this up. So Vixen is a free software that's commonly used for controlling Christmas light displays. To set up the Vixen software, first you're going to have to go into here, and you're going to have to set your different effects. Now, you can have all kinds of different complicated effects, but in my case, we're just going to be having single items. 
And I assigned all these to different names, the tree one bottom, bush middle, bush top, corresponding to where the different light strings were in my yard. So it'd be easier to read. You know, then have to set up your serial controller. I just set this up as a generic serial and I assigned 16 different outputs. And then you have to go through and patch them. And you basically do that by selecting all of them on both sides and pressing the patch elements button that will connect them all together. And you have to set up the settings on your controller. I named this one Arduino. So you can see that sending a text header is the tilde and the serial port configuration, we're setting it to that certain baud rate that we have in the program with eight data bits. And in real life, we'd set this to the port name of the Arduino that's connected, and that would only show up if it's connected. Then we can open our sequence. This one actually took me a while to write. This is just the Tanner Tech sequence. You can go in, you can import some music here, and you can click on tools and the beat bar detection. And that will add bars at each of the beats inside your song, which is very cool. Then you can add these different effects in here. In the case of a single element you're turning on and off, I just use the alternating effect. You just bring this in here and you can shorten it down, put it within the bar, press control shift B and it will put it in between the lines and you can just delete that. So that's the essence of how Vixen works. Now, one of the cool things about this setup is that you can use a MIDI program to control your lights, which turns out to be very cool and a little bit simpler than using a program like Vixen to do it. So here I have LMS, which is a digital audio workstation, and I've imported a MIDI file that I took from the internet. This is Manaheim Steamroller, uh, Joy to the World. And you can see that we have all the different tracks that play different things. Now here I've added two different tracks, and I've named them MIDI, and they're basically clones or copies of the tracks above it, with the volume turned off. Now if you go into this track, you can see that it's playing notes around F3, C4, so you can see that in my MIDI copy, I've basically scooted all the notes down to this spectrum, from C2, E2, all these. So as it plays through here, it's going to send MIDI commands every time it plays one of these notes, and it will turn that on and off. And so you can go through here and you can even add your own notes, right? Just put one in here, and because you're lining it up with the notes already there, it'll be perfectly on beat when it plays. And you can just adjust this, and because it's not going to be playing any sound, it's not going to affect the rest of the song. I think this is one of the biggest pluses about using a MIDI control for your Christmas light system. Now the whole reason that I did this project was because my old high school is having this drive through Christmas light display and they had a tunnel with about 26 lights and they wanted me to control these lights to music or some kind of pattern. And so I started putting together my control circuits and my display and then I got there and I hooked it all up and it worked but I didn't really have time to put it to music and so I just put it to a certain code that would make the lights turn on in an increasing pattern across the tunnel and then turn off again. Now it worked really well at my old high school and so I brought it home and I hooked it up to my Christmas lights in the front yard and I tried to put together something on Vixen but I realized that it's a lot more work than it seems and I have a lot of respect for the people that have big Christmas light displays in their yard and they put together this super complicated sequence on Vixen. But for me, I just put together a simple one for the Tanner Tech theme song. Tanner Tech, Tanner Tech, Tanner, Tanner Tech, Tanner Tech, Tanner. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. This is the lights as they are constantly turned on and off in a cycle, similar to the light tunnel. Well, 
Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something in this video. And stay tuned for next time.